Pilates slide class. We're going to focus on lower body today. So this is a quicker one and we are going to incorporate a resistance band loop. So for equipment, you need a resistance band loop. I'm using a heavy one. Um, you can go medium heavy, and then you're also going to need a slider. If you're on hardwood floors, a dish towel works great, or you could just wear socks and just slide with your socks. That works too. If you're doing this on carpet, then paper plates work well, or you can get those plastic gliders. Now, if you're new to Pilates slide classes, th these classes mix uh, traditional, <laughs> my dogs. Anyway, these classes mix Pilates mat work with sliding work. It's a continuous flow. Um, so we'll do some mat work and then standing sliding work focused on one leg. Then we'll do that same sequence on the other leg and then we'll finish up by centering off a little bit. Because this class moves one thing to the next to the next, it's a big endurance challenge. So a great way to modify it would be to just pause the video as needed. If you enjoy class, I have a couple more Pilates slide classes available on YouTube, and then I have a bunch more available if you are a Patreon member. All the information you need about joining Patreon is at patreon.com slash Nicole Pierce. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment. Now we're going to start this class with a quick guided warm up focused on mobility, especially through the hips. And we'll finish up with a quick cool down. For our warm up, you do not need the resistance band, but have it close by because our warm up will flow right into our banded work. We're going to start down on the mat. When we come up to sliding work, I will just rearrange my mat so that I have space to slide on the floor. Um, you don't necessarily have to, though. You could do the mat work and then you could just stand next to your mat work to do the gliding work. Okay, let's come down onto our backs for our warm up. So lay on your back. Feet flat on the mat, knees bent. Feet can be about hips distance apart or even wider. And to start, we're just gonna windshield wiper the knees side to side. So you're gonna drop them over to one side. You can let that opposite hip lift off the mat, bring them through center, and then just swish them over to the other side. Let's do one more each direction. And then come through center and we're going to come into what's called a hip release. Now I want you to keep your right foot planted firmly on the ground and with the left leg on an inhale, you're going to drop that left knee open to the left. And as you do, you're going to slide the leg long across your mat. Now, as you exhale, you're going to internally rotate that leg, bend the knee, slide it through center. So we're kind of tracing this controlled circle within the hip joint. Keep going twice more. Inhale, open and extend. Exhale, internal back through center one more this direction. You want to maintain a, a, a stable pelvis as you do this. So really connect it to your breath and now just switch direction of those circles. So as you inhale, knee is going to go internal, slide it long and then rotate it external, bring it back up three more times. Last time. Bring it through center and now hands are going to come behind that left thigh and I just want you to kick the leg straight and then bend the knee. So a little opening through the back of the leg and the hamstrings. In the sliding work we're going to do, the hamstrings and the glutes will get a lot of love. So I just want to open them here. And don't worry if the leg isn't getting all the way straight. If you're really tight through the backs of the legs, maybe it doesn't. That's fine. One more time. And then plant the left foot down. Keep it planted. Let's go into our hip release on the right. So on an inhale, you're going to drop that right knee open to the right as you elongate it, sliding it around the mat. And then as you exhale, internally rotate towards midline, bend it, bring it back through center. Keep going. Now this is all about stability of the pelvis as the femur kind of rotates within that hip joint. Switch direction next time. So now as you inhale, go internal, elongate, rotate external, slide it back up. Last time, bring it through center, hands come behind the back of that right thigh and you bend and straighten through that knee. One more thing in this warm up and then we're going to grab that band and we're going to come into a sideline position. 
One last time, kick that leg straight, bend the knee, plant both feet down, heels are under the knees, and I want you to lift your hips up into a long glute bridge position so we have this nice open extension through the top of our hip joint. Now from here, we're going to do a little swivel dip of the hips. So I want you to drop your left hip down, keeping the right lifted so you just twist it, and then on an exhale, square it off. Now over to the other side, right hip dips down and lifts. Keep going side to side, so we're getting a little twisting, and we are also firing up through the glutes which will serve us well as we go into our next sequence. This is where you finish your warm up. Here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Last time, hold at the top, fire through the glutes. Don't puff open through the rib cage. You hold for four, for three, two, and one, lower those hips, grab your band. We're gonna bring the band around our thighs. So mirror me, I want you to roll onto your left side body. We'll focus on this top right leg to start. Use the front or back edge of your mat to make sure that your torso is in one long line. And we're gonna be engaged through the side body. So instead of kind of collapsing down, think of almost a gentle lift away. Now, as far as the position of your legs, the knees are going to be bent. They're not bent back like this. You need to hop your knees forward. We're gonna start with a clamshell, squeezing the heels together, hinging open through this top leg. Bottom leg is going to stay down. Top right fingertips can be lightly on the mat for support. On an exhale, squeeze the heels together. Open up, pushing against that band and lower. So as we do this clamshell, I really want you to think of how you are creating that opening movement. So yes, the knee is lifting up, but this lift is not coming from the knee. It is coming from the hips, from your glutes. So really think about firing into the glutes, lifting from there. And as you lift that knee up, we don't wanna roll open through the pelvis, so you're not rocking back. So this might be a pretty small movement, and that is okay. Really squeeze the heels in towards each other, that's important. Now coming up next, we're gonna take this top leg to a hover. We're gonna keep this external rotation going, but we're gonna add an internal rotation as well. Give me four more here. Three. Two. Last time, and then with the thighs parallel, just lift this top shin up so that it's at a hover. Now from here, we're gonna start with that same external rotation and then come through center and find internal rotation. So the heel lifts up and then the heel swishes down. So we're picturing that femur head, the top of our thigh bone, rotating within that hip joint. Heel lifts up, heel down towards the bottom. Now keep reaching your tailbone long. I don't want you to tuck under in this, okay? So we have to maintain neutral through the spine. At any point, if it gets to be too much, you can always do this body weight instead of having the band on. You can always just ditch it. Now we're gonna keep this going, but we're just gonna layer in an extension of the leg. So it'll be internal to external, we'll come through parallel, we'll press it straight, and then bend it back in. So let's do that. We're gonna rotate internal, external, come through parallel, and now drive that leg straight and then bend it back into the starting position. Internal rotation, external, parallel, kick that leg straight, bring it back. Are you still engaged through the bottom side obliques? Two more. Last time in this combo, and then we're gonna hold our internal rotation. Come through center, press the leg straight, bend it back in. Now, next time you find internal rotation, hold, it's a little pulse up, up, up. Now, why am I having you do this pulse in internal rotation? Sometimes, it's easier or we're more effective at targeting the glutes by doing lifts with internal rotation rather than parallel. Might not be the case for you. Four more, we're gonna straighten the leg. Three more, two, 
One, hold, come through parallel, kick that leg straight. Now with a straight leg, once again, I want you to find internal rotation. So think of spiraling that thigh down towards the mat. Little pulses, up, up. Now your hips are still stacked, so we spiraled the leg, but we didn't roll the hips forward. Up, up, you got it. We have just one final variation, okay? And then you're done with the sideline work and we'll come to stand. Thigh is gonna come to parallel. We have another round of straight leg pulses, but we're gonna sweep the leg forward a bit. In four, pulse for three. Give me two, hold, come through parallel with the leg and I want you to sweep it forward about six inches to a foot. Don't tuck the tailbone under. Pulse it here to finish. You got it, 15 seconds. Up and up, you're almost there. Stay with it. Keep breathing. Make sure you're not rolling forward with the shoulders. Give me four. Pulse for three. Last two. And one, bend the knee. Oh, awesome job. All right, we're gonna come to standing. Focus is still gonna be on this right leg, but we're gonna switch to our sliding work and you can take the band off from around your thighs. I am just going to swing my mat so that I have room for uh, gliding. Come on, squeaky. So for our setup, the band is gonna go under your right foot and your left foot is going to be on the glider with the back heel lifted. So put the band under either the ball of your foot or the arch of your foot, whatever allows you to keep that foot planted best. You're gonna grip it in both hands. Left foot on the glider, square the hips. We're gonna start with just a back lunge using this band as weight. So we're gonna hinge at the hips, start to slide the hips back as you bend into that front right knee, slide it back down. Press your foot into the floor, drive against the resistance of the band, fire through the right side glutes as you come to stand at the top. So to begin, it is just gonna be the sliding lunge. Now to modify this, do it without the band, okay? By the way, if this is the first time you are seeing this cute little white dog in one of my videos, this is Squeaky. He, we are fostering him. So we've had him for almost two weeks now while, we find, while he finds his forever home. And he is a sweetheart, but he is a handful. So I'm glad to see, I think he's tired out. Hopefully he'll just chill for the rest of the workout. So we have our first variation coming up and we'll just hold at the bottom and we'll pulse it out. Now it's important, especially because we have this band creating weight, a front loaded weight, that we're not rounding forward with the shoulders. So I want you to think open across the chest. Now next time you come to the bottom, I want you to hold low. And it's just going to be a pulse, up a couple inches, down a couple inches. Now after this round of pulsing, we're gonna go back to full range, but we're gonna turn it into a combo. We're gonna add in a deadlift. You're gonna be releasing this back foot from your glider. So it'll be one back lunge, one deadlift at the top. In four, three, two, one. Let's do our first one slow. So you're gonna come upright to stand. Now you're gonna start to hinge forward, release your back left foot from the glider, come into your single leg deadlift. Come upright, that back left foot lands on the glider, and then you take it into a sliding back lunge. So keep that combo going, slow and controlled. When you come into this single leg deadlift, you are unlocked through that target right leg. You're energized through the back left leg. So after this standing gliding work, you are done with the right leg. We're just gonna do the same sequence on the left side. You have just two more reps, and then we'll do a second and final round of pulsing at the bottom. We'll finish with a deadlift hinge, and then you're done with this leg, okay? So we're getting there. All right, now next time you are in that low back lunge, you are gonna hold for me. Before we start our pulses, let's make sure we're in proper alignment. So square your hips, shift your right hip back, left hip forward just a bit. Up an inch, down an inch, up and down. Now we're gonna come up, we're gonna go right into a deadlift. We're gonna hold that for a little balance challenge. It's gonna be quick and then you're done with this leg. In four, pulse for three, two, one. Come up, go into your deadlift hinge and hold. Make sure you're breathing. You're here for four, three, two and one release the band stand it up oh shake out that right leg awesome job 
Okay, so we're gonna come down to the mat. We're gonna do that exact same thing on the left side. So you can put your glider off to the side. I'm just gonna swing my mat back around and the band will go back around our thighs. Like I said, these classes really move one thing to the next to the next, but if you need to take time to pause, now would be a good time to stop the video, grab a drink of water, take more of a breather. Otherwise, let's get that band into position. It's gonna come around our thighs and we'll lay down on the right side of our body. And we'll do that side lying work for our left leg. Okay, so let's get into the right alignment. You can rest your head in your hand. Make sure shoulders and hips are aligned so that our spine is neutral. And then you're going to bend at the knees and hop them forward, okay? Without tucking under through the tailbone. We're engaged to the side body. So you almost think of lifting the obliques away from the mat. Will they physically lift away from the mat? Maybe, maybe not. That's not the point. It's about engaging through the musculature, okay? All right, now you're going to squeeze the heels together. Top fingertips can be tented, open through the chest. Let's start with our clamshell. Hinge open through that top leg, squeeze the heels in and lower it. And remember, we're really thinking about what muscles are creating this movement. Can you get the glutes to fire to lift? Rotating in the hip joint without moving the hip bones, okay? So it's very normal. I know I say this almost every class, but it's normal to notice differences between your sides. Often, um, I'll have trouble getting one side of my glutes to fire. And I know that can be frustrating, but I want you to know that half the battle in progressing, in growing stronger and improving your body's function is just body awareness. So even if you're, it's a victory, just being aware and being able to notice the differences between your sides. Okay. So that in itself is a victory. Congratulate yourself. It is so good to be in touch with your body in that way. And then of course we work on getting to the bottom of it. How can we get that muscle group to fire? But don't be frustrated. Sides are different. Our body also is different day to day. Give me four more. Last time. And now take this left leg and just lift it so that thighs are parallel, it's out of hover. So we find that same external rotation and then we come through internal. So the heel windshield's up, heel lowers as if it's tapping your bottom heel. And also when noticing differences between the sides, yes, it can be a strength thing. We tend to be dominant on one side. It can also be a mobility thing. So sometimes if you're less mobile on one side, mobility can be the limiting factor. So we're going to keep this going. We're going to turn it into a combo. We're going to add in that straightening of the leg. One more like this. And then come through parallel. Straighten that leg, firing into the glutes. Bend the knee back to start. You go internal, external, parallel. Kick that leg straight, keeping tension on the band. But you don't want to keep this leg too lifted or you're going to come out of alignment, okay? So yes, we're focusing on what this left leg is doing. It is the mover. But we also have to take note of what the rest of the body is doing to support this movement. So are you still engaged through your bottom side obliques? Are you still open through the chest? So you can have your left fingertips tented on the floor for support but we're not pushing weight and rolling forward into it. So coming up, knee is gonna be bent. We're gonna find internal rotation and we're gonna do those little pulses. You have one more time through this combo. Internal, external without rolling through the pelvis, kick it straight, bend it in, find internal, hold internal, little pulses up. That internal rotation, again, it's just your thigh bone rotated within the hip joint. Don't bring the actual hip bone forward. Coming up, we're gonna straighten out this leg and do another set of pulses internally rotated. In four, three, two, one, hold, find parallel, kick that leg straight, and then go right back into your internal rotation without dumping this hip bone forward. Little pulses up. 
Now really think of reaching the leg long. So you're kind of engaged through the quads here to really hold the leg straight. That's gonna help us also get the glutes to fire. Now, if the internal rotation is not working for you and you feel your glutes more at a parallel, then I'm fine with you doing this in parallel. We'll all come to parallel up next anyway, though. Don't rock through the side body. One final variation, you can do it. Thigh's gonna come parallel. We're gonna sweep it forward about six inches to a foot. And four, three, two, hold, come parallel. Sweep that leg forward. Don't tuck the tailbone under when you do it though. Pulse to finish, you got it, 15 seconds. Whoo, that burns. Stay with me, you're so close to the end. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, done. Oh, <laughs> okay. We're gonna come to standing. We're gonna do that sliding lunge deadlift work now. I'm just gonna swing my mat over. Band can come off your thighs. It's gonna be under your left foot and we're gonna bring our right foot to the glider. So we're gonna grab the band. It's gonna go under our left foot. By the way, if you need to take a break, now would be a good time to hit pause, take 30 seconds, a minute, however long you need. Otherwise, let's do it. Left foot goes in the band, it can be under the arch or the ball of your foot, whatever helps you keep that foot grounded. And then your back right foot is going to be on the glider lift the heel square the hips both hands are going to grab the band and we're going to start with just that sliding back lunge so i want you to picture from that back right heel to the top of your head one long diagonal line so you break at the hips open through the chest drive that foot into the floor press against the band and again to modify you can ditch the band also, if ever sliding work is too much, another great modification is to ditch the glider and just do a regular back lunge. So you would just step to your back lunge and then come up to stand, okay? The sliding makes it hard because it's sort of like picture walking on a sidewalk versus walking on an icy sidewalk. When we're doing sliding work, it's like you're on ice. You're kind of constantly tensed. <sighs> Woo! Now I want you to picture your legs are on train tracks, parallel, okay? So they don't cross in, you're not walking on a tightrope, and you also don't wanna let this back right leg swing way out far to the side. So square hips, train tracks. We have our first round of pulses coming up. Next time you're at the bottom. Let's take it to that lowest lunge, big hinge forward with the torso, square through the hips, and we pulse up a couple inches, down a couple inches. Now, if you're really open through the hips, make sure that you're not coming so far down that you're just kind of hanging out in your hip flexibility. So it is a controlled low position. That's why I keep emphasizing squaring of the hips. Now, when we go back to full range, whoo, we are gonna add in that deadlift. In four, three, two, one, we take it to our combo. So you slowly stand up. Now you're gonna release that back right foot from the glider, come into your single leg deadlift. Slowly bring it upright, back right foot lands on the glider. And then we go into our back lunge. So if you're using a dish towel, it's kind of nice to have it unfolded so you have more real estate for landing back onto it since we are lifting the foot off and then replacing it. Don't sink into your low back, so brace to the abdominals. Now, another way to modify, instead of doing that single leg deadlift, you could give me a staggered deadlift. So you could, would keep your right foot on the ground like I'm demonstrating now, just in a staggered stance, and you would do the deadlift from there. Or you could always keep a hand on a wall or a chair nearby for balance support. We have one more round of pulsing to get through. We'll do the pulses and then we'll finish with that deadlift balance hold. Next time you're in your low lunge, you hold for our pulses. We're so close, you got it guys. So low lunge, pause, square the hips, bracing through the abdominals, open through the chest to modify, drop that band. Or ditch the glider and just give me a stationary lunge pulse. Push against that band. We're gonna come up, come into that deadlift balance. We will hold to finish in four, three, two, one, come all the way up with control, hinge into that deadlift, 
Pull your right hip down a little bit so that the hips stay square. Unlock through your standing left knee. Hold and breathe. Give me four, three, two, one. Release the band, come upright. Oh, we're gonna finish with some quick centering work, okay? It is very quick. I want you to find a wide sumo stance. So feet are wide apart and then externally rotating from the hip joint, turn those legs outward, come into your low sumo squat, pushing the knees wide so that they're in line with the middle toes. And then I just want you to pulse here. Now, as you do this, we're externally rotated, but you're thinking of drawing into midline. So without actually moving the heels, picture there are magnets on them, drawing into midline. This is a very quick finisher, okay? Just to bring things to center. We're gonna hold low. Heels are gonna lift and lower in three, two, one, hold low. And now you're just going to lift the heels and lower. Keep pressing out through the knees, lower. Final piece of this, you'll hold the heels lifted and we'll pulse. If that doesn't work for you, have the heels down and pulse there. Three, two, heels stay lifted, pulse to finish, down and up. Down and up, we cool down after this. Heels are only as high as you can lift them without buckling open through those ankles, okay? Four, three, two, one. Heels down, keep your legs wide though, turn those toes forward, and let's just come into a forward fold. Oh, get a little bit of release. Opposite hand can grab opposite elbow, it's in a ragdoll position, and just sway side to side a little bit, bending into one knee at a time. Ooh, just let it all go. A little freedom of movement here. When you're ready, I want you to settle in the middle and I want you to heel toe your feet in so that they're about hips distance apart or narrower actually. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this left foot and I want you to step it behind the right, okay? And then in this cross-legged position, I want you to take your hands and I want you to walk them over to the right. Now in these cool downs, I just bring you through some holds quickly, but if you want to stay on anything longer, please do. I'm walking the hands back through center, we're going to switch the cross. So now I want you to take your right foot and I want you to step it behind the left. And then we're going to take our hands and we're going to walk them over to the left. Walking your hands through center, uncross the legs, and we're gonna inchworm ourselves out to a plank position. And then right from here, I want you to lift those hips up into a downward facing dog, pedal out the heels a little bit. And then when you're ready, you can just settle into the calf stretch, pressing both heels down towards the floor. So we're gonna finish up by taking a half pigeon stretch on either side. If you know half pigeon is a little too intense for you, you could do a figure four stretch instead, either seated or laying on your back. Otherwise, as you start to shift forward, you're gonna take that left knee, bring it behind the left wrist, kick the shin across, and then we walk that back, right leg back. Lowering down, you can kind of rest your forehead on your forearms. And it might feel good to prop your hip up on a yoga block or a pillow for more support. Do what works best for your body. And again, if you liked this class, I have a couple more on my channel, and then I have a bunch of Pilates slide classes available via Patreon. And by the way, Patreon, it's all still on YouTube. Patreon just gives you access to private YouTube videos. So you can still do them all on your smart TV, your computer, your phone, however you do the uh, normal YouTube videos. Stay here as long as feels good. If you're ready to go over to the other side though, we're gonna press up to straight arms. We're gonna transition through down dog. And then this time it's just that right knee that comes forward. We kick the shin across. And we lower down, settling into the shape. Think of directing your breath into that outer hip area.
We'll finish by coming through seated. You can transition back through down dog, or I'm just going to roll to this outer right hip. And then I'm going to swing this left leg around uh, to come to a cross-legged seat. And let's just take one deep breath to finish. Inhale, arms up overhead. And exhale, lower through center. Awesome work today. That is your class. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new workouts for free here every Monday, sometimes more frequently. And then I post additional classes on Patreon as well as providing a monthly workout calendar there. I'm so appreciative of your support, whether it's here on YouTube, over on Patreon or both. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.